Hi there, this is CS Professor Pam, and I'm here to help you get started with HTML. So let us get started. Now, I want to give you a resource that we are going to work from. Um, anytime you're learning something, it's great to have a reference that you can refer to a textbook, something like that. And the one that I want to work from is called Interneting is Hard. The, the website is internettingishard.com. And so it's a free reference here that has some great material that we are going to work from. Um, although I will make a few adjustments now and then, but it's a great place to get started. So I would encourage you to go to this uh, website and make sure and bookmark it because you'll be coming back to it over and over again. Now it says internetting is hard, but it doesn't have to be. I don't know if calling it hard is really the right thing to say, but there are a lot of details involved in learning how to code. So that's why I'm here to help you get a jump start and really understand how to get started. Um, there are two fundamental languages involved in just creating a web page. And those two languages are called HTML and CSS. And we're going to start with that. So let's click on the HTML and CSS tab here. And I'm going to walk you through certain parts of this, but you can certainly go back through it again at your own pace. All right. Now, there's actually three languages that uh, are involved in web development. And those three languages are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They each have their own syntax. Syntax means there are rules that you will have to follow as you are learning to do this. Now, one of the things I want to uh, encourage you to do right now is you should think about the way that you want to um, take notes and keep references to these materials because you're going to be learning a lot of details. And of course you have the internet and you can always look things up, but you have to figure out your own personal learning style and how you want to do that. For myself, I actually like taking notes by hand um, and having a notebook that I can refer to. But there are also lots of tools online that you can use, but just know that you are going to need to be able to make reference to things and go back to information. All right, so, um, HTML is what we're going to focus on first. Um, HTML is the language that you use to create a basic web page, right? And um, we are going to start here. So HTML is how you define the actual content of what is on a web page. Um, so let's talk through what we need in order to do this. So what do you need in terms of tools? The nice thing about learning web development is that everything you need is free and easily available. And all you need are two things. You need a browser. And yes, there are lots of browsers out there, but Chrome is the preferred browser to use because of some of the development tools that it has. So we'll be talking about that as we go along. Um, it's not that you can't use Firefox, Internet Explorer, other browsers as well, but I'd like to really encourage you to make sure you always use Chrome. Then you need a text editor. Uh, this is where you actually write your code. Now, Ideally, you want to get familiar with a very common text editor that people tend to use. Now, in the resource over here, the editor that they suggest to use is Atom. And there's nothing wrong with Atom, but what has become even more popular since then is an editor called VS Code. And VS Code, if you search it on the internet, uh, you will find it here, code.visualstudio.com. And if we go here, we can find that there is a free download that you can do to download it for your environment. 
Now, that might seem a little, just a little intimidating to start. And so I'm going to show you some other options. There are also some online sites that you can use that makes it very easy to get started. One is called CodePen and one is called Replit. So let me just show you really quickly how to get started in these. If you go to CodePen, codepen.io, you'll want to create an account. I already have an account, uh, but you'll want to create an account and that way your work will be saved within um, the cloud in, in your account. If you use Replit, this is R-E-P-L-I-T dot com. Same thing, you will want to create an account. So um, I have a slight preference to Replit in terms of my online environment, but I'm going to show you guys both of them. Okay, so um, pick your tool that you want to use. Uh, now, in our reference here, they go through how to use Atom, but what you can do is sort of skip through this because I'm going to show you how to do this with, um, with the other tools. Now, the thing that we have to understand about a language such as HTML, again, is that there is syntax or rules involved. And um, in order to get things to work the way you want, you've got to follow these rules. So what you see right here is just the most basic framework of what you need to create a web page. Now, you will notice these angle brackets here. In HTML, you have these elements that are called tags, and tags are the building blocks of creating your page. Um, and I want you to also notice that things are indented here in a certain way. We're going to talk more about that, but there's, there's a rhyme and a reason to this and getting familiar with how to indent your code properly is important in terms of creating good code. And the indenting sort of shows things that are nested inside of each other. Now, I really just want to get us started. Um, but one more thing before we get started is there are a lot of files involved and you've got to have good file organization for a project. Now, if you use Replit or CodePen, you won't have to worry about this, but um, I'm going to start with VS Code, I think. And so what I want to recommend that you do is create a folder uh, you see, I have a folder here on my desktop called My Projects. And right now, there's nothing in this folder. Anytime I create a new project, I am going to create a new folder in this folder, right? So if I go here and I click on New Folder, um, let's call it uh, First Web Page. Okay, so I am going to put all my files into this folder. All right, so I am going to start up um, VS Code. Actually, I'm going to start with Replit. Let's, let's back up a second. I'm going to show you guys how to do this with Replit first. So let's go over here to Replit. And you'll see here, I have a button that says create. So when I click on create, it asks me what language do I want to use? So Replit is a really nice tool that can be used for lots of different languages. We want to do HTML. It's actually going to uh, allow us to do HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we click on this in terms of the template and you see there's kind of a goofy title here that is given to you, but you can change this. So I'm going to call this uh, first web page. And I'm going to click on create. All right. Now the nice thing if you're using Replit is that 
it actually presets quite a bit for you. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about um, some of the content in here, but let me walk through and explain what we have. So every web page needs to start with this line. You see, you've got the angle brackets, you've got an exclamation point, something called a keyword called doc type and HTML. Now you notice doc type here is in all capital letters. That's actually not required. HTML is not a case sensitive language, um, but some languages are JavaScript is, but here, this actually works just as well if this is all in lowercase. And actually, when I do my HTML, I usually keep everything in lowercase. So this is just telling the browser that this is the beginning of an HTML file. Now, with after that, we have an HTML tag. So you notice a tag has an opening angle bracket and a closing angle bracket. Most of the tags in HTML require a closing tag. So you'll see here there is a tag that is the same HTML, but it has a backslash in front of it. So those two make up a pair. And think of that as uh, the container, the overall container for your HTML file. Within that container, and I'm going to fix the indenting here. We want to have a head section and we want to have a body section, right? Um, and we're not going to even deal with JavaScript right now. So I'm going to take that out. All right. Now, some of these things in the head section, I really don't want you to worry so much about right now. These are, um, some, uh, and we're not doing CSS. So I'm going to actually take this out for now. I'm going to simplify this for the moment because I don't want us to under, to worry about these things. I want to do the bare minimum of what you need to get a page started. And so that would be my HTML inside of HTML. I have a head section inside of that. I'm going to have a title. And title is what is going to define what is in the um, tab of my page. Then I have a body, then I have HTML. All right. So I want you to see that this indenting helps me to understand what is enclosed. Every HTML page contains two basic sections, a head section, you see, here's the closing tag for the head and a body section. And this is the closing tag for the body. Inside of the head, I have a title and inside of the body, I just have some content, right? And if I click here to run this page or to, to view it, you'll see that all we see is the hello world. All we see is the content that is inside of the body section. The uh, information inside of the head section is information that is used by the browser, but is not displayed on the page. So this is what I want us to start with understanding is this fundamental, um, what it takes to make a page because you're going to be writing this over and over again. Now, there are some shortcuts and templates and things that can help you so that you don't have to type this in. But I want you to understand that the best way to learn this stuff and to get it into get the syntax kind of into your skin is to type it. OK, so um, I'm actually going to go over to VS Code now. Now, again, you don't have to do all of these options. I'm just showing you different ways to get started. So I'm going to go over to VS Code and open that up to show you a little bit about how to use that Visual Studio Code. And remember, I already created a folder on my desktop, right? So here I'm going to type in everything for my page. So the first thing that I want to do is open up the folder that I have created 
for my project. So I go to open folder and I'm going to go find under my projects. Here's the folder that I created, right? So just click on it. Do not double click. So I have now opened this folder inside of VS Code. I now want to create a file in this folder. You'll notice right now, if I show what is in this folder, it's empty, right? So we're going to show you how to create a file in there. So over here in VS Code, I want to go to File. I want to make a new, uh, a new file. And um, actually, wanna, we want to go to File, New Text File. Here we go. And I want to give this file a name before I do anything else because what's useful about an editor like VS Code is that it's a smart editor. Um, some of you may be familiar with an editor that's free on your computer on Windows called Notepad. And you could use Notepad to do web pages, but it's not a smart editor. So I'm going to show you what I mean by a smart editor. If I first of all save this, do a save as. Okay, we want to give this file a name. Now you'll notice it's saving it. I'm in my folder that I created here. You want to name this page index.html. That is the convention is that the main page in your web in your website, the name of it should be index and you need the extension of HTML. Once I do that, uh, the editor now understands the language that I'm typing in. And also, if we go look at the folder, you'll see that there is now a file in this folder, right? So I'm going to type in the commands that I told you we need for just the basic skeleton of our web page. So that starts with, and you see, it kind of helps me, but I like typing because this is how I get this under my skin. So doc type HTML. Then here I want an HTML tag and notice this editor helps me a little bit. It knows that an HTML tag requires a closing tag. So it gives me the closing tag, but I want to move the closing tag down a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the end of this. I always go to the end of a line and hit enter to go to the next line because it will help me with my indenting. So now I want my head section. And again, the editor is helping me and creating the closing tag for my head section. So I'm going to hit enter. And inside of here, I want a title and I'm going to call it my first web page. Right? So my head section is complete. Now I need a body section. And the content that I'm going to put in here is just hello world. Okay. So here is my first complete web page. Now what do we do? We save and uh, later on I will show you how to use something called live server in here. But for right now, I'm going to go to um, my file here. And if I right click on it and say open with Chrome, then here is what I get. So you see, I see the content and what you will also see is what do I see here on the um, tab? It's what I put in the title, right? So if I change, for example, this title, um, I'm going to change it to Hello Web Page. And if I save this and go to this page and refresh it so that it gets the changes, then now you see the tab text has changed to hello, right? 
And if I change something in the content, uh, my first web page, and I save this, you always have to save and then reload the page, you can see the changes. So this is really important. Um, programming is cause and effect, and it's really important for you to see uh, the result of what happens. Now, again, syntax is really important. And if you forget something, for example, if this closing tag is not correct, um, sometimes it'll make a difference. Sometimes it won't make a difference. Okay. But it's really important for you to know, um, you know, if I do something like this, like this is, this has a few problems here that I've just done. And you see now something really goofy is happening here, right? And that's because I have this kind of partial tag that's not closed up that's in here. So this is why it's really important to kind of take things slow and also the editor here will, um, if you get used to the sort of the color coding, you'll see here that things that are tags or keywords are in um, different color from just your text, which is in black. So that will help you as well to understand what's going on. All right. All right, so just as a review here in our text here, we see our entire page is wrapped in the HTML tag. Um, so you have an opening and a closing tag. Then inside of that, you have the head section and the body section, right? Um, and inside of the head section, we put a title. And inside of our body section, we're going to put content, all right? Um, and the, the indenting is really important to make this easier to see. All right, let's go on and add in a little bit more here. So let's add a paragraph to our page. Um, so we've got an element, a tag, which is a P tag that gives us some text in here, right? So I'm actually going to get rid of this for a second because you, this is content that doesn't have tags, but we really want everything to have a tag. So I'm going to put a P tag here. Uh, this is a paragraph. And I need to always close this tag, right? Now let's save. Let's go look at what happened. Now, it might be hard to see, but the, the text is a little different. Paragraphs and just content without um, sometimes can look a little different here, right? But if I put another, for example, let's put another P tag here. Now this can go on and on. You might want to uh, sort of wrap this around so that you can see, right? So I've got two paragraphs in here right now, right? So I save, refresh my page, and you'll see that automatically I kind of get a little, a little gap, a little spacing between paragraphs. So a paragraph is one of the fundamental tags that you use to put content on a page, right? Um, another fundamental thing are headings. And there are six levels of headings, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So let's add a heading in here. So I'm going to put it here, H1. This is H1 heading. And if we save and refresh the page, you see 
Um, a heading is how you basically uh, specify text that is very important. And the font sizing is uh, built into the browser in terms of how it displays an H1, H2, H3. H1 is the largest. And I'm going to just do H6 is the smallest. And we'll save. All right, so you can see the difference. H1 is very big, H6 is very small. So you use this to um, help to, to uh, group together content on your page and specify importance to content on your pages. All right, um, so that is the very fundamental uh, of what we can do here, the very basics. Let's go over here. If I want to change up what I have over here in Replit, I can add in an H1. I can add an H6. I can add some paragraphs here. And look, make sure I've got to make a little correction there. And when I want to see what's on my page, we see it over here, All right? If I want to work in, the third thing that I told you guys was CodePen. And if you create an account in CodePen, you click here to create a new CodePen. It's a uh, default setup for you to be able to do HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but we're not doing JavaScript right now. I'm going to minimize that. We're not doing HTML or CSS. I'm going to minimize that. So here's my HTML. And um, this one does not actually give you automatically create the um, closing tags for you. So you have to be mindful of that. So I have that my head section. That means you have to put all your closing tags in here. You also have to be a little mindful of your indenting yourself, right? So again, between the two online references, I think Replit is uh, I, I have a, a slight preference to Replit than to this. Here's my closing tag for my body, and here's my closing tag for my HTML. And I can save it, and you're seeing the page down here on the bottom. And you can actually change your settings so that um, yeah, you, you can give it a name here. So here's where I give uh, this page a name. All right, so now you'll be able to come back to it. And I think in my settings, I can um, put the... Uh, put the the my console here on the side, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So again, this beginning lesson here is just showing you how to create the fundamental skeleton of an HTML page, which has your HTML, your head, a title, and the body section. All right. And we will be moving on from here.